Hello everybody. Good evening. Can you all hear me? Muhammad, Rishi, Shyam, Samu. Am I audible to all of you? Okay. Okay. So, uh, Shyam, are you a new student? Good evening, Tamila. How are you? Okay. All right. Samu, you are attending the class after a long time, I guess. You were not there in the last two, three classes, isn't it? Okay, Tamila, you were also missing? Yeah. This consistency factor is very much there in the MBA students. They are very regular about the classes. Uh, Rishi, is that so? Is this your first class with me? No. I have uh, seen you in my class previously. Okay, Darshana, good evening. Welcome to class. Uh, today we will be studying about demand forecasting. Okay. So, you all know about forecasting. So, forecasting means any kind of prediction. Like we have weather forecasting in the news channels. Uh, so, similarly, there are forecasting for business as well. And the main thing that needs to be forecasted uh, with precision and accuracy is the demand. Because it is the demand that generates all the business for the uh, for a company, whether it's a manufacturing firm, whether it's a service provider, whatever. It is the demand that uh, helps in the generation of business. Okay. So, demand forecasting is of great importance and it is a work that needs to be done by uh, people with uh, excellent skills and uh, experience. Uh, formally, it should be done by those people. But uh, normally, like uh, there are different methods which are used for demand forecasting, which we will be seeing in the subsequent slides. Okay, so how was the Christmas for all of you? Good, you all enjoyed yourself? Liza, good evening. Welcome to class. Okay, it wasn't special. Uh, and what about the last weekend of 2014? Last weekend this is, isn't it? Okay. Alright, good evening Reza, welcome to class, we are discussing about demand forecasting today. Alright, so in modern business, forecasting is often made on anticipation of demand. So anticipation of demand implies demand forecasting. Uh, like how much do we expect our sales to be in the future time, whether we are uh, a raw manufacturer, uh, a raw material provider or we manufacture an industrial good or a consumer good, durable good, whatever. We need to assess the demand beforehand so that we can make the necessary arrangements and uh, satisfy our customers. So, anticipation of demand implies demand forecasting. So, forecasting means expectations about the future course of development. So, future is uncertain but not entirely so. Yes, it's very difficult to uh, predict what is going to happen in the future, but based on our experience and the past data which we have, we can make certain calculations and arrive at 
tentative demand for our product and that tentative demand can be of great help it will help us in uh, like keeping pace at the time of requirement so demand forecasting is not a speculative exercise into the unknown it is reasonable judgment of future probabilities of market events based on scientific background demand forecasting is an estimate of the future demand so it cannot be sent percent precise since it's an estimate it cannot be precise if i say that in my next class i'm going to uh, like there will be 12 students in my class so that will be just a, a forecasting which uh, forecast which i am making based on my past experience that uh, tomorrow is sunday tomorrow will be like um, a, a working day in uh, middle east people will be going to the office and after uh, in the evening they will be attending the classes as well so i can expect this much students and on thursdays i won't get lot of friends because people will be out they'll be enjoying the weekend so those are some uh, estimate or predictions which i'll be making on my uh, experience and like available data okay now levels of forecasting Le forecasting is made at different levels the first one is micro level micro means the tiniest the smallest or rather the individual level so it refers to the demand forecasting by individual business firm for estimating the demand for its product then each firm individually does that that is the micro level then industry level it refers to the demand estimate for the product of the industry as whole it relates to the market demand as a whole the whole of the market like if we have 100 um, firms which manufacture cotton shirts so uh, the demand for all of them together will be the industrial demand and industrial demand is uh, of importance to the government and uh, as well as the various agencies which operate and which help in the formulation of the policies at international levels like the planning commission is there in india similar agencies must be in every part of the world the macro level is when the demand is for the nation as a whole and uh, the basis uh, the major uh, use of macro level demand is for the government of the country it is the government uh, which decides on the basis of that like what course of action it has to follow to uh, like satisfy the people and uh, make optimum utilization of its resources get the best out of it and be like uh, the best government of the country so that all is uh, done with the help of the macro level forecasting made by the uh, by the various agencies there are various agencies employed for the purpose their work is just to collect the data and make the forecast now what is the importance of forecasting uh, it helps in the production planning obviously we cannot start our production in uh, like out of thin air it has to be uh, based on something and that is um, on the basis of forecasting like we need 50 units so we will manufacture 65 units in case some units are uh, not up to the mark they will be rejected and in case the demand goes uh, heavy some like, like 40 may be needed or maybe 60 may be needed then similarly sales forecasting and control of business inventory control inventory is controlled on the basis of the forecast like if we stock too much we may be losers our product may just go out of fashion may become obsolete or it may even be destroyed so we need to be very cautious with this approach then growth and long term investment program stability economic planning and policy making this is again from the prospect of the government okay any doubts anybody on uh, need to ask anything till now what about others
okay macro level macro level is uh, the at the huge uh, or we can say at the nation level the uh, at the level of a country that is macro level forecast and that type of forecast is made in the interest of uh, the government of the country the government uses the data that is collected uh, for making its policies like uh, every year um, the government of a country formulates its budget so that budget is based on such kind of forecast only like if we expect that in the next year the demand for home loan will be very high people will uh, go for home loan to buy more houses so in that case the government will try and keep the rate of interest low for the uh, home loan prospectus so that more and more people can come and take home loan easily okay uh, yes rishi stability like stability in the uh, country uh, the stability of the country depends on the stability of the industries which are operating stability of the economy and economy depends on the industries industries are made up of individual firms so it all starts with individual firms if their forecasting is correct like they uh, is suppose there is a watch company and that watch company expects the sale of 100 units in a month so uh, if the sale is just for 30 units in a month then that company is going to suffer a great loss so that is why forecasting is important it will become unstable in one month the demand is just of 30 in the second month the demand may go up to 150 so it's very difficult for the company to uh, decide what it can do so so uh, based on forecasting the company can plan its production like suppose if it's the festive season so the company can expect that people will buy uh, watches this time uh, it's the festive season as an uh, accessory or as an investment they'll invest in costly and expensive watches so in that uh, For a period of time, the company may invest more in the production, and when it is lean period, then it may just uh, keep the production down. So in that way, the stability of the firm is maintained. Okay. Uh, one minute. There is one question. Shyam, uh, no, they. actually it is the other way around the macro level forecasts are dependent on micro level forecasters okay like micro level is the tiny level is the small level but they are important from the point of view of the uh, country so they are at the root level so it is that way and uh, it's not so always sometimes it's vice versa as well okay now types of forecasting first is the short term forecasting short term is for a short period of time and it is just up to one year it can be just for a month for three months for six months or just for a year so it relates to the policies regarding the sales purchase pricing and finance so in most of the firm the information regarding the immediate future is necessary for formulating a suitable production policy it like Uh, if that company is expecting the sale of watches in the festive season like in india at the time of diwali people buy lots of such things they buy home appliances they buy watches they buy gold they buy jewelry any kind of stuff uh, it's too much in demand at that point of time so planning for that normally the diwali period is from uh, october to november it is in that time gap so it's not so that the company will decide in uh, october first week and will meet its target no it will plan for it in advance and maybe by uh, september sorry september is too late by july the plan should be ready and it should have been implemented 
accordingly to meet the market demand in the coming months so that is the use of short term forecasting the medium term is for for a period of more than 1 year it may uh, uh, land somewhere between 3 years to 1 year okay like uh, between 1 year and 3 years that is the medium term forecasting then long term forecasting is the one that is beyond 1 year actually it is not only for 1 year it is for a long period of time maybe 5 years like uh, the plan the planning commission हेलो ओके ऑलराइट सो सो क्रूशियल डिसीजन आर कवर्ड अंडर द लॉन्ग टर्म फोकास्टिंग लाइक प्लानिंग ऑफ मैन पावर नीड इफ अ कंपनी प्लान्स टू ब्रिंग अबाउट अ चेंज इन इट्स इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इट विल रिप्लेस द old machines with the new one so that will be a part of long term forecasting so planning long term financial requirement is necessary for the firm to make the necessary arrangements to secure fresh capital investment if it um, plans to expand its production expand its business or go for new infrastructural changes so all that will require lot of money lot of capital and that capital will be again um, arrange with the help of long term planning based on long term forecasting now what are the factors involved in demand forecasting time period is important levels of forecasting time period like how much is the time in consideration whether it's for one month one year five years whatever because a thing may be variable in time period of uh, one month but it may be stable over a period of 6 months so that all is important then level of forecasting at what level are we doing it what is the purpose of forecasting is general or specific like specific if it's for a particular firm so they want to know about a particular product only so that is specific which method is being used what is the nature of commodity it's a consumer product an industrial product a durable product luxury item whatever necessity kya uh, whatever it is then the nature of competition uh, how many new uh, like firms are expected to enter the market in that period of time so that all will be the important considerations in forecasting now what are the objectives of demand forecasting Uh, it uh, first is helping in continuous production uh, maintaining the production cycle of a company regular supply of commodities meeting the market demand formulation of the price policy then to formulate effective sales performance effective sales performance depends upon the uh, regularity of product in the market regularity of supply regularity of demand everything then arrangement of finance to determine the productive capacity then labor requirements these are things which cannot be changed at one go uh, they cannot be uh, met 
at the wink of an eye. So, three preparations are needed for such crucial things. Now we come to methods of forecasting. How are we going to do this forecasting? So, uh, there are basically many methods, but, uh, but they have been put into two categories. One is the survey method, and the second is the statistical method. Survey is when we uh, find out the intention of the buyers with the help of questionnaires, feedback forms, or taking a direct interview, something like that. That is survey method. And statistical is using the statistical tools which we have in our hand. These are the different statistical methods which can be used. Uh, have you studied about any of these in uh, your stats class? Trend projection method, a method of moving averages, regression method. Anybody? Hello. Okay. okay. Hmm. So now let's go to these methods. We won't be doing the uh, the statistical methods in detail. We will just have a look at it. That's it. So first are the survey methods. So forecasts are done both for established products and new products. Now if we have to go for a new product forecasting, how we are going to do that? Do we have any data for it? Any existing data for such a product? No, we don't have any existing uh, data for that product. So it's on the basis of a similar kind of product that we do the forecasting. So the demand forecasting for the established products can be done in routine manner with information drawn from existing markets and past behavior of sales. The forecast of new products are necessarily custom built jobs that involve more ingenuity and expense. Since the product has not been sold before, it is difficult to get any clue for demand forecasting. Okay, so when we have to focus for a new product, it is more challenging. Is it clear to all of you? For any doubt? Now the first one, survey of buyer's intentions or consumer survey, the first method which is used. So it is the least sophisticated method and most direct method of estimating the sales in the near future. In this method, the customers are directly contacted in order to find out their intention to buy the commodity. It is also known as the opinion survey method. Then intentions are recorded through personal interviews, mail, post surveys or telephone surveys. Now, there are two types of surveys. One is complete enumeration method. It is the one in which each and every potential customer is covered. Their opinion is taken. And sample survey method, a small sample of people is selected. And then the survey is done just on their opinion. Okay, so this is a very, uh, we can say haphazard method, not a very reliable one. Uh, you know about the exit poll. You know exit poll. Uh, in every news channel, they show the exit polls after once the election is over. Yeah. So what is that exit poll? That exit poll is just a survey method. In that, they just. Uh, do a survey. What do they do? They stand out of the polling booth and um, they just um, ask the people who just who who have voted. When they come out, they ask them, "Whom have you voted? Whom have you voted?" That is the um, exit poll method, and it's very popular in all the channels these days. Now, survey or expert opinion actually. 
In this case, only the experts in the fields of selling goods like wholesalers, retailers are uh, contacted. They are the people who are experts. They have a wide insight into the market. So they are the best people to tell what could be the uh, future prospect. Wholesalers, retailers or direct salesmen because they are the people who directly deal with the customers. So they know their likings and dislikings. So many companies get their basic forecast directly from their salesman who has most intimate feel of the market. So wholesalers and retailers by their experience are in the position to feel about the probable sales in the coming years. Okay, this is one method. Then they have missed out on one method that is the Delphi technique. Anybody knows about that? I'll just write its name in the chat box. Delphi technique. Okay. Delphi technique is a similar method. It is also a survey type of a method. But the thing is that uh, there is an there is a panel of experts who are appointed for the purpose of forecasting. They are experts in their field. They may be technical people. So their opinion with regard to a product is taken. Their feedback is taken. And based on that opinion, the expert opinion, the uh, forecasting is done. That is the Delphi technique. It is through mail. Uh, experts are sent uh, questionnaires or something through mail and then their opinion is collected. That is Delphi. Then the third uh, method is controlled experiment. The controlled experiment is just like any other experiment uh, method. In science, the scientists do experiments to arrive at some uh, conclusion. So similarly, uh, same thing is done by and uh, done under this method. So under this method, different determinants of demand are varied and the price and quantity relationships are established at different points of time in the same market or different markets. So only one determinant is varied, others are kept constant and controlled. And this is a very new method. Suppose fast flow method, uh, to some extent it resembles that riser. Yeah. Like, uh, Suppose uh, there is a, we have to estimate the demand for cotton shirts in the market in the coming three months. So, what are the factors which we need to consider? Can you tell me? Price, okay, what else? Apart from price, uh, the demand, okay, that is what we have to assess, okay, demand has to be assessed. So, what are the things which are going to influence the demand? No, I'll put it simple. Uh, what are the things which are going to influence the supply of shirt in the market? The supply of the raw material, the raw material is cotton wool, okay, and the, uh, the crop of cotton wool, the growth of that depends upon the climate of the country, isn't it? So the first thing is climate, how is it going to be and uh, for demand also the climate is important, like if, uh, if it will be too hot people will definitely wear cotton shirts and the demand for cotton shirts will be high in that case. So that is one factor. So uh, there are various factors. There is price, there is brand, there is climate, there is availability of labor. So suppose we keep one factor vary. We keep climate as a vary factor because that is something that is uncertain. So uh, now the climate is vary. Now we have to um, Conduct an experiment to find out the forecast, keeping the other factors in control. Okay, 
that is the control method of uh, forecasting. Then the next is cumulated market situation. Cumulated training. Have we have you heard of this cumulated training? Did I discuss it with you before? Cumulated. Cumulated is a word that means a similar type of. Okay. The simulated market situation is a it's like an artificial market. Artificial market like situation is created and then uh, the uh, ex, like the survey is made. And survey is made like taking direct interview. So under this method an artificial market situation is created and participants are selected. They are called consumer clinics and those participants are given some money and asked to spend the same in artificial departmental stores. Different prices are set up for different groups of buyers. The responses to price changes are observed and accordingly necessary decisions about price and promotional efforts are undertaken. Like there is, a, uh, there are sets of customers and they are divided into different classes like the lower middle class, upper middle, middle class, upper middle class, higher class, that way. Those living below poverty line. So there is a, there are different sets of customers and based on their behavior, we come to assess the demand for a particular product in the market in the upcoming time. Okay. That is cumulated market. Now we come to the statistical methods. The statistical methods are uh, useful for the long run forecasting for the existing products and there are several ways of doing it. First is the trend projection method or time series, moving averages, regression, barometric and other methods. We will not go too much in detail for these methods. We can go to the other things. Now this trend projection method, as the name suggests, it is based on the past sales. So a firm which has existed for quite long time will have accumulated considerable data regarding sales for a number of years. So such data is arranged chronologically with intervals of time. This is called a time series. Okay. Now there are four types of components. Secular trend, seasonal, cyclical, random. We don't need to know lots about that. So that is all. I can say very uh, formula based. Now the real pro problem in forecasting is to separate and measure each of these four factors. So when a forecast is made, the seasonal, cyclical and random factors are eliminated from the data and only the secular trend is used. That is a precaution which is taken. And now there are different methods for calculating the data, the result. Now trend projection is there. This is again used for the long term forecasting. There are two types of methods. Methods of moving average and least square methods. This is the formula for that. Okay. Um, this is the formula. That, uh, so we put the, this is the data that is there. So we have uh, find the sum of all the data that is there. x is one factor, x square, then x into y, everything. Then we have put these values in the formula and then we get the answer. You can see this is like the formula. Substituting the above values in the following normal equation. Then following, solving the equation. Now what is this type of equation called in which there are two variables? In which there is an A and there is a B. There is X and Y, two variables. What is that called? Uh, yes, variable. That type of an equation is called a simultaneous equation, isn't it? 
math students. An equation in which there are two variables. This is a simultaneous equation. So what we'll do is we'll convert this equation into one variable. Like it will either be for A or either for B. And then we will put the value of that in A and B place and then calculate the remaining result. So it's um, like it's very practical that we don't need to do. That is a part of statistics, this, this whole. And then for every year, like it's been projected, 96, 97, 98, you can see, and year-wise. Now methods of moving averages, this is also a similar type of a um, method. And it is very popular because of its simplicity and lesser cost. So the basic idea in this method is that past data serves as a guide for the future sales. It's too cold in India. I'm talking and smoke is coming out from my mouth. At this point of time also. Yes, it's, it's like that. Today in the news it was showing that the temperature is around 4.3. Okay, in Oman also it's very cold. It's very cold here. So, this is the next method, that is the method of moving averages. This is related to that method only, so I am just skipping this and I am going to the next slide. So this is one example of the same. Now what are the advantages and disadvantages? It is given over here. It is simple and can be applied easily. It is based on mathematical calculations and hence it is very accurate. Now the disadvantage is that it gives equal weight age to the data related to different periods in the past. So it cannot be applied if some observations are missing. It gives equal weightage to everything. So that, that is the negative point of that. Now there is a regression method. Then there is trend projection. This is again the data given. Uh, based on this we have to predict for the future. Putting the values in the we are coming to an answer. Okay. This is how it is done. The simple linear equation is there. Method. There is one barometric method. Then there is simulation method. Simulation method, uh, now if it's for a new product, then project the demand for a new product as an outgrowth and evolution of the existing old product. It may be assumed that color TV picks up where black and white TV sets are off. So this approach is useful only when the new product is very close to the old product. Then there is substitute approach. According to this approach, the new product is to be considered as substitute for the old product. This is it. Now what are the difficulties in forecasting? Changes in the size and characteristics of population, saturation limit of the market, existing stock of goods and constraints of the firm. Like it's not very uh, easy to get the forecasting done and then to rely on that is even a difficult step. The importance is the same as the purpose of forecasting. So there should be accuracy, there should be plausibility that implies the management understanding of method used for forecasting. Like one method may be too good in one situation and for one product, but it may be a failure for the other product and in other situations. So 
it's, we have to take care of such things. There should be economy. The cost of conducting the forecasting shouldn't be too low. There should be quickness. There should be flexibility. Okay. So this is it. Now we come to a, a case study. So there is a case study here. In which uh, there are like three sets of things are given. Is it visible to everybody? Okay. So, what is the background? It is sales forecasting for a consumer good. So, just the background is the manufacturer wanted to forecast across its 200 plus retail partners for its 600 plus items. So the items are clubbed into categories which were in turn clubbed into departments. They were retailers who are regular buyers as well as irregular buyers and intermittent buyers. Like intermittent means those who um, come on and off. They are not regular ones. Now the objective of uh, this forecasting is to segment the retailers based on historical purchase patterns and statistically validate the segmentation means to categorize them, to develop statistical forecasting models with accuracy more than 80%, to develop a process for regularly update the forecast given the recent data. So these are the things or these are the parameters which should be met by the company's uh, team that is going for the forecasting or the method which is being adopted. Or what is the solution to this? Can we just read the solution? Everyone? The team has created a data model specific to the business process of the retailer and the current forecasting problem in a dimension fact method. Product, retailer and time being the hierarchical dimension and actual and forecasted sales are the facts. So then it is about uh, forecasting then the theory of probability is of great importance. The theory of probability is also used when you have to do any kind of forecasting. It's a little technical as well, this uh, thing that is written over there. So what, which technology was used by that company? It was MS SQL Server and R, the algorithm was developed in R. So this was the solution that they offered. Now next one is business forecasting in logistics. Just read the project background. The client ships products across the globe from its operations point in Asia and caters to a number of product categories. The product categories are well diversified and has different demand dynamics including global trends and seasonality, destination country, macroeconomic factors, etc. So Sibia was required to develop a forecasting model for each product category, for each destination country for next 24 months. It was a long term forecasting and for some major countries at product item level. The objectives were to create a comprehensive system for demand forecasting across all products, geography, uh, for future forecasts and updates, to provide statistical measures of the forecast performance. What was the solution? They developed an 
automated forecasting modeling process with manual intervention to improve the models at certain key points and automatic model iteration based on forecasting accuracy. They created an automated process for forecast update across models. Means it was a combination of a forecasting model with manual intervention. That is what they did to come at the correct uh, result. So the technology used was MS SQL Server and MS Excel for interactive reporting. So how the data look like? You can see in this chart. Blue line is the actual and pink is the predicted. So it's very close. Isn't it? The pink line is very closely following the blue line. Yeah, little variations are there. So this type of method is really what a company looks for. So now we come to another case. It is about Titan company. You know about Titan? What is Titan? Which company is it? What does it manufacture? Anybody? Yeah, it's a, very, it's a company that manufactures watch. Uh, it's a very famous Indian company and now it has even uh, diversified its business and into uh, like heavy machinery manufacturing as well. So, summary of the case is how would Titan know which market would place demands for which specific type of watch, which manufacturing unit should cater to which retailer and exactly how many watches will we need. Till now, the answers lay in a gut feel based in accurate and feeble demand forecasting system. So read how Titan used APS to get back on tra track. What is this APS? It is the advanced planning system. Okay, so how do we, they use that? This is the background of the company. You can just read it. Just para. Just read that. Okay, Sam, I will just enlarge it. So it's a company which operates in the southern part of India. I Means it's, uh, it's manufacturing. Uh, part is there. So the highlights of this case study are that it has a customer base of 80 million. After implementation, demand production alignment improved significantly apart from 70% to about 85%. Like demand and production were in alignment now. There was no uh, confusion we can say. By the end of 2007, Titan moved to the next version of APU. 
it also plans to use a function called real time development so titan needed a system that could even with expansion produce a forecast that would be instrumental in directing the company through a mine field of capacity constraints multiple phase geographies and the multi tiers distribution channels means uh, in simple words they needed a system which will bridge the gap between the forecasting and the actual demands okay against all odds the company should be able to meet the target so the coordinating between the supply chain and distribution has been one of the biggest challenges of titan this is said by uh, the uh, the vice president of the company okay so on the supply side staff would work out a supply forecast based on current stock and likely sales over the next two months and then plan for production all of this was done on manual worksheets which were sent to the factory where weekly uh, feeds were given for production plan there was no specific scientific basis for this so this was it it was all done manually okay so this paved the way for mismatch inventory the production alignment ratio hovered around 70% which meant that on an average 30% of titan's inventory was not being used okay there was just a matching of 70% so to get started titan zeroed in and in on an advanced planning system which could deliver forecasts that looks into account that took into account resources constraints like plant and supply capacity so they decided to go with the apo for functional reasons as sap was an advantage because they already had a stabilized sap erp backend means they were already working on the sap technology in that uh, factory or premises so they gave preference to it so the implementation was no less than a herculean task it was plagued plagued by problem getting data from 200 retail stores and about 100 redistribution stockists on time was a challenge apart from that they were impeded by hardware limitation to tame that bull bull the vendor suggested that titan move up from 32 bit to 64 bit but slowly the primary reason for deploying the aps was was fading uh, checking the focus like they uh, they introduced a new technology from 32 bit to to 64 bit okay so aps are not like ordinary implementation they have fewer users most with a stake in the business so they themselves became anchors and started using the system so it took some persuasion to get users to accept the optimizer figure means when you whenever you introduce a new technology obviously there is some difficulties in implementing so this was one problem that the company staff was facing so the project brought with it a bundle of perks for titan the new system provided a streamlined demand planning process so importantly the system allowed titan to create semi finished watches in the first stage of production most watches looked the same and wait for a confirmed forecast to produce a finished good okay so this strategy of postponement improved titan's market response time and ensured that they made fewer non sellable watches so this was the technique that they used the new system helped them to make semi finished watches okay so if there was need they could quickly finish those watches they can transform them into finished products and can easily get away this was the technique which was adopted by the titan company using this advanced system planning so the system also took advantage of the deployment optimizer which allowed titan to distribute finished products from its five assembly plants on an optimal basis like there was some drawbacks of the distribution system as well due to which the demand and supply were not meeting each other there was a gap between them so this was also taken care of in this new method so this system also significantly reduced production planning time from a week to 3 days the number of manufacturing units has also increased from 2 to 5 
and additional complexities that have cropped up have been effectively taken care of by the new system. Okay, so this is so this is the uh, new system which has been adopted and it has yielded favorable results for the Titan company. Okay, so did you all uh, like this case study? Yes, uh, their workload on the supply side is also reduced. Okay, so we are done with today's class. Uh, there is uh, nothing else that has to be taught to you now. So we will be meeting in the next class. Hope to see you all and hope to see you many more. Thanks for your time everybody. And uh, please you know, fill the feedback form which you will be getting at the end. Okay, thanks for your time. Have a great week ahead. And uh, welcome, let's all welcome the new year. New year, new hope, new aspiration. That should be our approach. So let's meet in a new year. Okay. Bye. Thanks for your time. Please fill the feedback form. Good night. Take care, everybody. Our next class will be on Thursday, that is the first uh, day of the new year. We will be enjoying in that, isn't it? Okay then. Bye. Take care. Good night.